So today we're going to create a planter box and I'm calling this the planter box with a purpose because this planter box is not only going to hold uh, some beautiful grass, Mexican feather grass in it, but it's also going to block this unsightly torch down roof behind me with the vent pipes and everything sticking up. Now you can make, it's a really simple planter box that I'm going to make and I'm making it for that purpose, solely to block that view. It, if you want something more, you know, more ornate or, or something that's going to go inside your home, you wouldn't make it the way I'm about to make it. You'd probably use cedar or redwood. Um, I'm making this out of Douglas fir and I'm going to paint it, but uh, you'll get the idea of you know what it is uh, meant for and you know how to make it it's pretty simple so we're going to uh, jump right into it and we'll see you in the garage all right so this part's pretty simple I almost wasn't gonna show it it's so simple we're just cutting these uh, this 2 by 12 and a couple of 2 by 8s to make the overall shape of the planter box. Really simple, it's just Douglas fir right off the shelf, Home Depot stuff, and we're gonna waterproof it uh, in the future, you'll see here. So uh, we're just gonna cut this up and put it together. So you can see here we're just making a uh, simple box so we're just making uh, here's our sides this is the bottom and we're just gonna put two more pieces in here we're using these uh, deck mate three inch screws deck screws they're coated so they don't rust out well as fast most everything rusts out eventually but uh, and just a simple box and then we'll waterproof it and paint it and and that'll be our planter. It's that simple. Now they are put together. We have put a coat of the. Can you throw me that stuff? Mm -hmm. That little spray stuff? We have a coat of the Rubber Flex Stop Sealer on there uh, by Gardner on the inside. We're just doing that to seal it. Hopefully, you know, the water sitting in there, we're gonna have stone on the bottom of these when we plant them out. But hopefully having this waterproof, uh, you know, this is just a, basically a, a bitumen style, uh, you know, asphalt spray. Um, I've used it on roofs and other videos and stuff, but we're gonna this since this stuff is now on the inside. Hopefully, we get some longer, uh, some longevity against the water. Um, we're just gonna tape the top off so it's not all over the place on the top. Finish spraying, you know, here where you can see the it's still raw wood, and then we'll um, and then we'll put the legs on it. <clears throat> that edge is like that. Okay. All right, so I've sprayed the interiors of these planters with the uh, rubber flex sealant and the next step is to flip it over and drill some drainage holes in it I'll probably drill you know eight or ten drainage holes uh, three-quarter inch nothing too big and I will cover it with a galvanized mesh so that the aggregate won't fall through once it's uh, once it's on the um, roof so I'm gonna flip them over I'm gonna put the legs on them now and drill the holes so stay tuned.
all right, now I just got this, uh, yeah, what is this? I just grabbed it. It's a 15 16th, 15 16th bit. And I'm gonna drill out, uh, you know, eight, 10 holes. It's just arbitrary. You can put as many as you want in there um, that you think is gonna give it the drainage that it needs. I mean, if you're in a really rainy area, drill some more. If you're in a dry area, drill some less. We only put four in, it was good enough. So now that we have our holes drilled, I'm just gonna take my uh, tin snips, my straight tin snips here, and I'm gonna cut off a little square of this steel mesh, kind of chicken wire. And I'm gonna place it over our hole like so. Once I have it over the hole, I'm just gonna take some of these pan head screws and uh, screw it down here. All right, so I'm gonna do that on every single hole. So we're gonna have at that and then uh, next step is we're gonna flip it over and get the legs on it. So here we go. So I sprayed the raw holes with some of the, uh, again, with some of the rubber flex to seal it up um, on this side so that the water draining through doesn't deteriorate it faster. It will deteriorate over time because this is just Douglas fir, so, but, uh, but we're trying to get as much time as possible. So I went out and bought these inch and a half uh, these are glue on caps for ABS pipe and I went and bought a bunch of them here um, and what I'm gonna do is just screw these on to the bottom here these are gonna be my my feet to keep it up off the roof so I'm gonna screw four would be wouldn't be enough I feel like it would sag in the middle but I think six is gonna be fine one two three four five six of these and uh, and that will keep it up enough so that the water can get through and you won't you can almost kind of shove a stick under there to clean the leaves out and stuff that might get trapped underneath this planter so i'm going to screw these in and uh and then we'll be off all right so here they are all wrapped up finished we have our waterproofing on the inside we have our mesh for the drain holes we have our exterior matte paint on the outside and our ABS legs on them. They're very simple to make. Now when I get, after I get them up on the roof, I'll show you how we're gonna plant them out. I'll show you how we put the aggregate in and plant the uh, Mexican feather grass. That's what we're gonna use, a Mexican feather grass. It's got a great, you know, kind of wispy, dry uh, lightness about it and will make a great border low border and that's all we need to cover our roof so I will see you guys up on the roof All right, so here we are on the roof with our Nacella tenuissima or Mexican feather grass that we're gonna put in our planter up here. This is a great, great type of grass. You can see it dances in the wind. Just the lightest breeze makes it move so effortlessly and it, it just looks beautiful. Um, you know, it doesn't, it will, it does flower it has a little white flower that will come up but for the most part it stays very light and very wispy and that's the effect I want um, that's what I want to look out look at when I look out the uh, window of the the artist studio so we're gonna place this roughly 18 inches apart from each other it will grow three feet high by three feet in diameter so it does does grow into quite a large uh, plant it can be separated 
and you know you can increase the ground space of it as you go um, it almost looks like troll hair when I do that that's what it's reminding me of but it uh, it's a lovely grass it's great for borders it's great to just plant in with other you know perennials and it will it will fill out the space and create some volume and, and fill up any leftover space between other other flowers without taking away from that that plants uh, you know effect so with this with what I'm doing I'm cr creating kind of a kind of a border with it or a, a blockade of some sort so that we don't really see the the kind of the ugly roof that we have up here this will take a I wish it was a little bit larger but a, you know these five gallon plants were twenty dollars a piece and for the amount that I need up here I just didn't see the need to spend uh, the money to buy you know anything that was bigger than this and eventually it will be bigger so we're just gonna plant it water it and let it grow now when it comes to the soil with these plants it needs to have good drainage and in order to achieve that I'm gonna mix the soil myself I'm gonna use a standard planters uh, planters mix and I'm gonna mix in some perlite and that perlite is a volcanic rock that will uh, somewhat aerate the soil. It's very light and it will it'll create that drainage that we need in this soil because this plant is a plant that likes drier climates. It is a drought tolerant plant. Um, so we're going to get to mixing the soil up and I'll show you how we do that and uh, we'll get these babies planted. So there it is. Mexican feather grass. Beautiful. Okay, so here's the components of the soil that I'm going to mix. And we first have our all-purpose planters mix here. Just standard potter, potting soil. It does have, it isn't, you know, it's fairly, has a fair amount of grit to it, but not enough to where I think it's gonna be, it's not gonna pack down too hard. And then all of a sudden the plants are smothered in water or wet soil. So, there's our potter's mix. So here's our perlite, and this says to mix three inches for every six inches, then to a depth of 12 inches with your soil. And we're kind of not using it in the application. So what I am gonna do is mix uh, a few handfuls in you know, kind of a three to one ratio with our soil. It's not an exact science with what we're doing, but I want it to be, you know, add some drainage and aeration to the soil. This stuff's fairly, you kind of want to be careful with it. It's, you don't want to breathe a lot of it in. So you just, you want to be a little bit careful, but uh, we're just going to mix it in there like so and get our soil mixed up. This is, uh, I like to mix the soil up by hand, you know, and get it kind of to the way, where it needs, where it feels right, you know, where it feels like it's, where it feels like it's gonna have enough drainage. You want it to feel kind of light and fluffy, not packed down and wet. add a little bit more. Okay, so here what I've done behind me is I've laid out the plants where I want them to go in this planter. It's pretty simple. They're going in a straight row down. 
The only thing I did take into consideration is the view from the artist studio behind me. Now when you're standing on the hilltop back here, you're mainly looking out in a straightforward direction over the roof. So what I did was I made it a little more dense in that area and then I thinned out the planting as it goes down because your vision will start to skew and it'll look a little more full. So there was a little bit of a science behind this placement, but you know, it is subjective. So play around with it, move it, move it around and, and stand back and look at it and get a feel for it and place the plants where you think they're gonna look the best for your particular situation. So the next step is the planters that I built that are up on the roof, I need to lay in a liner in through the whole planter. Now I'm just putting in a weed block liner that I had laying around the house um, and I'm gonna place that in the planter and put the soil in and the soil will hold it in. I don't need to staple it or anything. I'm just gonna place it in and when I'm done I'll cut off and trim off the the excess uh, material. So that's the next step and we're gonna get that going so that we can get our plants placed into the planters themselves. Here we go. All right, here I have my weed block fabric. And this is, you know, just a woven weed block fabric. And it's gonna, I think it's a Vigora, Vigoro brand. So it's a Home Depot brand. And I'm just gonna lay this out um, over my planter. I got enough here so that the whole length of it will cover the whole length of my bed. Okay, so that's exactly, I'm just gonna lay it out over the bed, just willy-nilly like this, and then I'll put my soil in and that will hold it all in place, so. Okay, here I have my soil, and I have my liner in place, and I'm just gonna put it in by hand here. Once you feel like you have enough in the bottom, then you can get a little more aggressive with it and really get the soil in there. Or you'll be here all day trying to get the soil in. Now I'm not gonna put too much soil in the bed at first because these plants have quite a bit of soil that they come with. And what I wanna do is, is get the plants out of there case here and you can see uh, you can see all the loose soil and a lot of it is is not you know doing anything productive for the plant so I'm gonna break it down these this particular species of grass is a, has low-lying roots so you can go in a low shallow a shallow planter like this which is okay um, you'll start to see the little feeder roots these little guys coming out and that's what the grass is, you know, using to feed itself. And you can, you know, you can tease the roots out with your fingers, just lightly break it up a little bit until you get it down, you know, to the height. In this case, we're, you know, planting these pretty, in a pretty shallow planter. So we want these plants to sit down low. We don't want it to sit up and mound out of the planter. So we'll have to break off a bottom of the, quite a bit of the bottom of the roots here in order to get the plants to sit down where we want them. So here's our first plant placed where we want it to go. And a lot of the soil that I broke off the bottom is again the soil that is going to compact. It's gonna stay moist. So I am gonna add some handfuls of this perlite to the soil and I'm just gonna mix it in with my hand here in place, the soil that I broke off. So you only really, when you're planting in a shallow planter, have to put in a low, lo uh, lo a small amount of mixed soil because you're gonna be breaking a lot of the soil off the plant. And a lot of times people planting in these type of planters go, oh my God, I have so much soil left over. Well, it's because the plant itself had a lot of soil on it and you have to move it. So 
just kind of prepare for that ahead of time by not putting so much soil in the planter. So I'm going to keep planting this out and we're going to take a look at it once they're all in. Here I'm simply taking a razor knife and cutting along the edge of this uh, material here to remove it and it cuts really easily. I mean you barely have to put any effort into it and it will just cut away. And uh, that leaves a nice clean edge there. Instead of trying to cut it out beforehand, which would be uh, take you forever. So great way to do it, just put it in place, get your soil in and cut it out after. All right, there's our Mexican feather grass all planted up in our planters on the roof. I think it gives it a great effect up here. I mean, this you can already see it's blowing in the wind. It looks elegant and hopefully it does its job of, of blocking some of the not so visually appealing roof stuff. So I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna take you down to that level and that's where you have the best view of the roof to see if we've uh, achieved our goal here of creating some visual interest on the roof. There you have it, our Mexican feather grass border on the roof. And I think the big question here is, did we achieve what we set out to achieve? And that was to take this mechanical view and turn it into something that would be organic and flow with the wind. And I think we did achieve that. I think our choice of the feather grass was, was great. I think it's gonna move, it's gonna always be changing. It's gonna draw your eye to it instead of, you know, you wanting to look away all the time and look to something more pleasant. So it will grow over time. It will become larger. It will it will flow over the top of the the roof. It will grow up and cover even more area. So it's only gonna get better over time, and I'm super happy with that. Uh, I hope that this inspired you to get into your own backyard this weekend and try some experiments. Whether they fail or they work out, it's all about the experiment and trying new things and learning that you have the ability to make things happen like this. Thanks for watching and stay inspired.